All right, I'm going to try to do a quick review of just expansion in period five. So um, between period and four and five is kind of um, weird start and end date. So period four actually ends in 1848 with the end of the Mexican-American War, um, which is a war that really sealed uh, expansion in the United States. But period five begins in 1844. So really period five um, is where talk of the Mexican-American War and expansion really begins. Uh, and 1844, it's 1844 because the election of Polk um, is really the symbolic beginning of manifest destiny and expansion in the United States. Um, period five ends in 1877 with the official end of Reconstruction after the Civil War. So period five includes the Civil War and Reconstruction. I'm not sure I'm going to have time to totally review that with you in class, but it would be worth going over um, some of that in your notes. We looked at Reconstruction on Monday. So I think the thing to think about for expansionism in period five is really this image called American Progress by John Gast. This was drawn later and um, or painted later in 1872 after the years we're going to talk about today. But uh, it breaks down pretty well, pretty nicely. I like to look at this um, from north, south, sorry, northeast, southwest. If you're looking at the direction of the painting, every every item um, and person in this painting is moving from east to west, which was manifest destiny in the United States. Was the idea that um, it was our destiny to expand beyond the original thirteen colonies and move forth into this frontier? So there's some great symbolism here. So you see the city in the background um, and that shows kind of the industrialization and progress that had happened. And now we've already developed this area um, in the east so well that we should expand westward. Um, and so the expansion westward really begins with things uh, like tech, te uh, sorry, techno technological <laughs> innovations in things like the railroad and the telegraph. So transportation and communication are the two major technologies here that are um, the symbol of American progress. You can also see that she's carrying a school book. So we also want to bring education, uh, especially to the native peoples that we are conquering, right? Uh, also in this image, we see, again, a train symbol of transportation uh, and growth in America. We also have the farmers who have uh, historically gotten the short end of the stick in our history, but are also the frontier, right? They, they expand and bring development and uh, cultivate the land they create, uh, and they are always the initiators of that progress in America. But ultimately, they're always almost always overcome by the city and in industry uh, in America. The covered wagon here uh, also symbolizes the frontier and families moving westward to find uh, land and security for themselves. Um, you can also see some skeletons. Uh, it kind of symbolizes maybe some death along the frontier that it wasn't an easy uh, an easy exploration. Also the bison uh, with westward, westward expansion um, and manifest destiny came the um, sad death of the bison and of the Native Americans. So they're sort of on the same plane um, and have the same fear and are running um, away from American progress. Also some symbolism that's kind of great in this image is just the light to in going into the darkness that this progress of technology uh, and exploration and education and communication and transportation are all moving west trying to bring the light to the dark native 
people of the past. This is the past and this is the future and we're bringing it West. Um, and sadly that brings the trail of tears and the devastation of the native population. So I'm gonna just mark some of the context leading up to this period five, um, some of the events of exploration. So I always start with the natives because this is their land, uh, but that is initially overcome by European colonization of the 13 original colonies. So this is periods one, two, uh, and moving into three. So um, 1607 to 1733. So uh, this pushes the natives westward. The natives begin to make deals with the French uh, for fur trading, but uh, this ultimately ends with the French and Indian War. So British, the British and the colonies work together against the French and the Indians uh, to win the Ohio River Valley. That's west of the Appalachian Mountains um, over here. But uh, for a while, at least in the beginning, the British uh, drew the proclamation line after the French and Indian War, which basically said, do not expand, leave the natives alone, do not, um, do not stir any more fire here. Um, but ultimately that didn't happen and westward expansion did continue, especially after the Louisiana Purchase with Jefferson. Uh, where he buys the Louisiana territory from Napoleon for 15 million. Then we also have uh, the Florida Purchase. So Monroe uh, buys Florida from Spain, uh, but again, this is after a lot of the attacks and the Seminole Wars in Florida, pushing the natives out. Uh, and then a small group of white, I think it was maybe like 300 or so um, white settlers in the Republic of Texas actually worked together um, with the American government to annex Texas um, from Mexico. But obviously, um, Mexico did not support this. And this led to the Mexican-American War in 1846. So, um, in this time and after the election of Polk, uh, there was um, a treaty made about the Oregon Territory. So there was an official divide of this territory um, between Britain and the United States. Britain got parts of Canada and the US got part, uh, Oregon and Washington. And then with the uh, Mexican session after the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, uh, Texas cedes the land um, um, north of the Rio Grande, um, and um, this huge territory is now given over to the United States from uh, from Mexico for 15 million. Also, there's the Gadsden Purchase, which gives us the remainder of the land north of the Rio Grande. Um, and gives us now the uh, continent of the United States um, or the territory of the United States rather. Uh, I'm also adding there, I hadn't had this in your original notes, but in 1867, we also have a treaty with Russia which cedes the territory of Alaska. Um, and it isn't until 1898 that we get, uh, that we annex Ho Hawaii uh, in order to have um, more refueling stations in the Pacific for the United States military. This completes uh, the United States territory uh, and this brings on or almost, well, first of all, wipes out the Native American uh, population drastically. Uh, and it, you can also see here some of the military action that led to the conquering of this territory. It was not without blood, uh, but there's also a lot of diplomatic action um, with uh, and negotiation uh, with Mexico and with France and with Great Britain, um, and also a little bit of both, right? Um, conquering the original territories and uh, Florida from Spain was not easy. So 
we got Florida from Spain, Oregon from Britain, the Louisiana Purchase, this middle area from France, uh, and a lot of this Southwest and West um, area from Mexico. So again, it was not without blood, but it wasn't without diplomacy as well. Uh, and this was fueled by the belief in manifest destiny, which we've talked about before, and which is the symbol symbolism in that painting. It's just the idea that we have to spread the white culture and the white culture is supreme. And we have this God given right to take over all that land and spread our religion and whiteness to an quote unquote uncivilized people. Um, so once we have secured the land that is the United States, this leads into expansionism with the Spanish-American War by 1898. Um, just to review some presidents that were responsible for expansion before this time period and into this time period, we have Thomas Jefferson with a little thing called the Louisiana Purchase, heard of it. Um, then we have James Monroe, whose famous Monroe Doctrine, again, basically told Europe to mind their own business and stay out of uh, the Latin American uh, Wars for Independence, uh, that this land is now settled, stay out of it. Uh, and then um, John Quincy Adams um, reaffirmed some expansion um, negotiation with the adams onis Treaty, which negotiated to cede Florida from Spain. Uh, then we have Andrew Jackson, who actually tried to avoid, for the most part, war with Mexico, but his actions with the Trail of Tears, again, is uh, in the deliberate attempt to push natives out of uh, their land um, is significant. Uh, William Henry Harrison was elected, but quickly uh, died 31 days into his presidency and his vice president, John Tyler, took over. And um, he was in charge when the Republic of Texas separated from Mexico. So he supported the annexation of Texas and did sign the bill, uh, which is pretty good for a guy that didn't actually get elected, but he didn't close the deal, Polk did ultimately. So Polk is pretty much known as the president of Manifest Destiny. Uh, and he only served one term and in that one term, you know, got a lot done, annexed Texas, um, divided Oregon with Great Britain, um, negotiated the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, uh, and he wanted more land. He even offered to buy Cuba from Spain for a hundred million, but that fell through. Um, we got, we d attempted that again later, right, um, with uh, Spanish-American War in 1898. So Polk did a lot of damage, right? Got this area, this area, negotiated this area. Although this little guy at the bottom here um, was actually President Pierce that negotiated that. So we'll give him some credit there. <clears throat> Remember part of the reason that especially the South wanted to expand was to expand slavery. Um, it wasn't enough necessarily to have slavery in the southern states. They wanted to expand it even further to hopefully hold that um, that power and that philosophy of labor uh, strong, especially in Congress. I apologize for the lining up of this is off, but um, the Wilmot Proviso was actually the idea that um, we needed to forbid slavery in this new territory, but Wilmot did not succeed in this initiative and it failed uh, in Congress. So some of the um, settlements of the Western territories or frontiers. So frontier is just uncharted territory that um, is being explored. There are four major frontiers. There's the fur trader frontier, uh, which were mostly like mountain men trading with the natives for animal skins. There's the gold uh, mining frontier. So the search for gold in California and silver in Colorado and Nevada. Uh, then there's the farming frontier. So pioneer families want to start homesteads. This is kind of 
middle class America, you needed a few hundred bucks, you know, to make that journey, but hopefully you got some land out of it. And then we have the urban frontier, which is the growth of the railroad industry, mineral wealth, um, attracted uh, farmers and professionals and business owners into cities, especially um, Oregon City and San Francisco at the time. All right, I'm gonna stop there, but that should provide you a little context for our DBQ, our document analysis today. Thank you.